Hello, and welcome to The Remembering Show. This is Chase, and we're going to have a roundtable discussion where we'll be welcoming uh, callers with with their experiences and asking questions to keep the discussion going on the, on our topic for tonight, which is living in community. Uh, I think it's time we... We take the next step forward as a human race and and remember the ways of our of our ancestors and of our future selves who will be living in community and we have a few guests tonight involved in our round table discussion, one of which I'll introduce is Cindy K. Courier. Hi. We have Jenny Pippin. Good evening, everybody. And we have Linda. Hello, everybody. This is great being in family. Wish you were all here. Lynn is sitting here with us. Hello, everybody. Good to be here. And uh, we actually do have a table set, and our chef is in the kitchen. Here she comes, bringing a big bowl of salad. Finished salad, yeah. This is how we do it in community. Awesome. Um, Chase, maybe we want to define community a little bit, because I think when most people think of communities, they think of their neighborhood and everybody living in separate little houses, and I'm not sure how many of your listeners know what we mean when we say living in community. So what do you mean when you say that? Let's talk about that. <laughs> we can totally talk about that. You might want to say why it is that it's us on here with you tonight, and I'll just go ahead and say it, because a few days ago we established a house of people who did not know each other uh, a month ago or even a week or two ago um, who decided to make a go of living together and uh, with a, a certain goal in mind, and our community happens to be formulated around um, getting off the money system. And so we are a group of um, five of us uh, doing life together here in Lake Norman, North Carolina. Yeah, very awesome. Yeah, we actually have a home that was unoccupied with a fabulous space to create a homestead, gardens, a dwelling. Um, the community just came together, just sort of fell into place. One person after another after another just sort of came together and said, you know, we all have a like-minded goal and we all want to share what we have and share what we can do with everyone else. So it's just, it's beautiful right now. It's awesome. The garden's in place and many things are in the works and Lots of plans are on the drawing board, so to speak, and <laughs> and uh, there's many things to come that we can share with everyone. So, um, just letting you know again to any callers, we actually have two who are two callers who are calling in, and I can open it up to the caller from 919 and see what you have to say or if you have questions. Uh, 919, are you there? Hello? Okay, I'll just leave you on. Try to talk and we'll see. I'm hearing a little bit of noise. Maybe you forgot you pressed the button. Just talk and interrupt us if you uh, if you find your phone. Okay, let's keep going. Um, we can talk about some of the things that we've been doing and what we've been learning over the past couple of days. 
Um, so what are some of the practical things that we've been doing? Well, one of the things, you know, when you have a goal of learning together to live without money, um, that kind of stretches the imagination a bit, and most people's minds don't go there easily. And so the path to that place is a little bit winding. Um, I had started a Facebook group called Living Without Money a few months ago, and fortunately people delivered some really great ideas to that Facebook group. And because of that, um, sorry, I'm getting distracted. We have some. We're, we're actually having the table set, and some people are starting to go ahead and eat. And so, I'm looking at them. So I'll stop. But um, other people delivered some great ideas for living without money, and we decided to take some of those ideas and create a to-do list. Um, I don't know if I can. Um, one of the things on that to-do list was a garden, of course, um, because some of us have, well, I have been learning how to forage and eat food from uh, the wild, uh, which we, you know, edible weeds and edible flowers, but we have someone among us who is really good at gardening, and so she was able to help us um, make a really, plant a really neat garden this week. Um, Chase has been experimenting with acquiring water from the ground or in pulling water or pulling water from air in order to provide clean uh, drinking water for us so that we're not using um, water bills all the time to for our drinking. Um, I'm also experimenting with uh, alternative ways to do laundry without using a traditional washing machine um, that doesn't use power. And we're batting around many ideas. Um, one of the hardest ways to live without money, <clears throat> excuse me, is transportation. And most people don't want to walk. Um, so that's something that, that, that we're looking at. How can we provide, you know, ways to get around? We may be looking at the Amish and, you know, horses, buggies. We don't know. But we'll be open to all ideas. Um, because we feel that that, that uh, Linda says she wants to do that cross country. She wants to ride horses cross country. I just yeah, thought I'd throw that. I asked him if he would let me do it one time. We could take a covered wagon and go across the country instead of our RV. Yeah. But he kind of he kind of nicks that. So. <laughs> What you're getting here is dinner time conversation <laughs> because the show is during dinner time for us right now. Um, but we've thought of many projects and we're open to many more. And are we living without money right now? No. This is a transition. Um, our home is intended to be an educational uh, center. We want to be able to provide support and services to any community or group of people who wants to join us in living without money. Um, why would we live without money? Why do we want to live without money? Um, I believe that if enough of us, maybe 10,000 or so, pulled out of the money system altogether, that we could collapse the system and start over. And that's our goal. We, It's lofty, and our group is just five of us, but we actually think we can change the world here. We are the event. <laughs> they said we are the event. <laughs> one of the main advantages to this experiment, and one of the things I'm learning, is that it's easy to, uh, if you have money, it's easy to just go to Walmart and buy what you need. You know, it, 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 it's what most people will do if, say, they need a vacuum cleaner or they need a lawnmower, they need some tomatoes. Um, but thinking outside the box has so many benefits because we've we've been learning how to develop relationships with each other and with other uh, other people in the greater community. And just in the topic of food, you know, it's easy to go and buy it from the store. Um, 
a lot of times I don't know who grows it. I don't know where it came from or how they treated the soil or uh, things like that. And I'm a, I'm a bit disconnected because I I think it, the first 20 years of my life I didn't know where food came from. I didn't know that a hot dog didn't grow in the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Spaghetti trees, they're saying. Um, so I, it's a huge learning process, and there's there's so much more to learn, which makes me really excited to continue this. Um, one of the things that we are looking at is for the garden, uh, compost, manure, and it's it's simple to go to the nursery and buy manure or soil or compost. They don't always have what, exactly what we're looking for. Um, but there were some alternatives as I looked into it. A lot of people were giving away free manure. <laughs> uh, so there's an abundance of, of, <laughs> of <laughs> abundance of crap in this world. And it's useful crap. <clears throat> <laughs> it's kind of like that that old phrase that another one person's trash is another person's treasure, and that's where I see the efficiency coming into play in in becoming more community oriented. Because if we're all communi- if we're communicating with each other, then we will know who has what materials and resources. And they'll be able to post a Craigslist ad, or they'll be able to raise their hand and say, "I have, I have wood, chip. wood chips." Yeah. Is another thing we're looking for. Yeah. Um, and if we had communication happening, mm-hmm. we would all be able to find exactly what we need, it, because the abundance yeah. is all around us. It's just there's only so many things that the stores are selling and only so many things that are profitable, um, even in the food markets, it's, we're only getting a fraction of the fruits that grow. Um, cause only certain fruits can, can be shipped and marketed and sold um, without being turning rotten before they get to our mouth. Um, those, are, those are just a few things I've been learning. Um, there's also just learning how to work together as a team. And I've been pretty much a solo solo flyer my whole life. And if I had problems with people, I could always just leave and find some other people. <laughs> but here, as we, as we commit to this community and this family, then... I'm not afraid to stick around through the the times of uh, little emotional flares or frustrations or stress, or anger. Um, we haven't had much of that. Um, but we, when we do, it's it's like there's this underlying understanding that it's just a temporary thing, and it's it's not something that's going wrong. Something is something good is happening, because like <laughs> Lynn says it's like a marriage. You have little flare-ups. You have little flare-ups, but if you have a basic foundation, which Linda and I do, which is a spiritual foundation, they're just little flare-ups. And yeah, you know, we have them every once in a while, but they don't last very long. We don't we don't uh, seethe and try to get even or anything like that. They're just they're just human things. You just misunderstand someone sometimes. And if they understand that it's just a misunderstanding, it doesn't last very long. You can explain your way out of it real quick. <laughs> <laughs> and the easy route would be a divorce. Right. Which uh Yeah. The easy thing would be to keep it up, hold a grudge until it got worse and worse, and then finally someone 
says let's get a divorce or just walks off? Well, in the beginning, that's what we did was commit to each other. No matter how bad it got, we wouldn't, neither one leave, because we'd done that before. And so. in, in community, it's a similar thing, I think. Yes. You know, you're working together. It's kind of like I said, a foundation. Your foundation is to build a community, and that's your underlying foundation. Commitment. And all the little stuff that happens are just little interferences, and if you have that foundation, you get over them real easy right. and not harbor a grudge. They're all opportunities for growth. That's yeah. how I see them. So I think we all do. Would you Um, so in the same way with living in community, well, it is an infinite world. You could roam this planet and never see the same person twice. Right. There are so many people, there are so many cities and cultures and um, regions. I won't call them countries anymore. <laughs> uh, regions to this planet. And you could just do that. Um, but there's a lot to learn from being being with those, staying with it even through those challenges. And if you have as good a cooks as we do, you feel <laughs> like you're eating in a gourmet cafe in New York. Yes. <laughs> and we're we're eating leaves and vegetables, and Ooh. like it's it's delicious because they knew how to fix them. Mm. That's another advantage that we're finding that each of us has our own skills and talents, and when we value them, they they fit so perfectly. We've got a fabulous cook. We have specialties and in, in group psychotherapy and group processes and marketing, a, marketing architecture architecture what are some interior design art music so anything, in, everything. in a way all these all these gifts fit together including we also, yeah, we also have a writer. Yeah. I don't know much about it to talk about it. Cindy could share. Yeah, Cindy, share with us about your book. What is your What is your book about? It's okay. called Forgiveness: The Hero's Journey. It'll be beneficial for people wanting to start community. Yeah, well, one of well, a body of research that isn't talked about much or published much is around the topic of forgiveness. And that research started around the 60s and continues to this day. Um, and the findings are phenomenal. What they have found is that the root of all what they're calling mental illness, which I take exception to that term, but the root of all mental illness is old anger or um, what we know is resentment. And it's allowing emotions to pile up in your system. And we call that hardening, when because emotions are really hormones. And so when you get a collection of hormones around difficult emotions, you end up with toxins, and they stay in your body and, and create illnesses and imbalances. And um, probably one of the most surprising um, of the uh, syndromes that uh, forgiveness addresses is bipolar disorder, um, addictions, depression, um, anxiety, just about anything you can name <clears throat> can go back to old emotions or resentment. And so, <clears throat> excuse me, um, I wrote a book called Forgiveness, the Hero's Journey based on Joseph Campbell's uh, metaphor that we are all uh, on a journey and then there are certain stages that we go through on this journey together and that our difficulties are really just parts of life 
and we like to say that things are good and things are bad, but really um, life comes to us as a whole or we choose it as a whole. And so the book that I wrote um, addresses difficult emotions um, and really how to forgive even things like crimes against humanity and that kind of thing. So that's it. So coming into community living, a lot of times people will start to project their old anger and their old stuck emotions on this brand new, fresh community of innocent people. Exactly. Um, You know, there's a lot of talk right now among the OPPT people about resolving their soul contracts. And uh, I think I would just phrase that differently in a way that the whole world can understand, and that's taking care of your stuff. Um, You know, not letting your stuff... not letting your stuff get old and stop carrying around... The ability to, to release uh, pain, old pain. And, of course, grief is a natural process, and we all go through it, and, and we're all going to have pain. That's inevitable, but suffering isn't. We don't have to suffer with our pain. Um, but we choose to by bearing it and allowing it to get old and hanging on to it. <laughs> Mila is a is a puppy dog. She's... Want, wanting to say something in the radio. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Mila is the 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 fam one of the family dogs. <laughs> um, but living in community, if if your triggers are there, it's, they're going to get tweaked. And what I've found is that if people are getting upset about something, usually it's, it has something to do with the trigger in themselves. And, um, you know, people can get upset about the least little things or it can take a long time for them to get set. It can take a long time for something to set them off. Um, Either one of those things can be um, trigger material. A lot of people are afraid of conflict, and so they will do like Chase said, just walk away. Um, You know, avoidance would be something that, that people would look at. So when you're in a place of being able to resolve your issues, your old pain, um, then you find forgiveness much easier. And and I guess forgiveness isn't just saying, oh, that's okay, you know, you just kicked me in the shin. (laughs) Forgiveness is taking responsibility for yourself. It's giving responsibility where it belongs. Um we're not going to forgive and forget. We're going to remember what people have done and what we have done. And living in community together is being uh, requires being really honest with each other and saying, yeah, you kicked me in the shin and that really did hurt. And then letting it go. So there's, you know, this is spur of the moment. I didn't plan on talking about this at all. <laughs> so, um, Sorry if I'm chopping it up. (laughs) One thing I'm thinking about is, you know, we can define community as this small group of people. we got seven people around the table here. Um, But we're also part of a greater community or the larger, the bioregion, you know, the, the whole continent, you know, the whole planet, the whole universe or multiverse Um, if we take it to the level of uh, what we see in mass media there's a lot of people watch the news each night and a lot of people now are moving towards alternative news and seeing what's going on in the world through uh, Facebook articles and blog posts Some of those things seem to trigger people, mm-hmm. and just in the same way as they trigger, you know, you'll, you'll find your triggers in a group of seven people. You find it in the in the in the larger society as well. Cindy, do you have any thoughts on on this? Yeah, 
The brain is a funny thing. The area in our brain that registers our sense of self is located right next to the area of our brain that registers emotion. And so when we feel strong emotion, we have a strong sense of ourself. And so we tend to overblow things, all of us do. And we all tend to take things personally when they're not. And we do that just because of the way our brain is constructed. And so I think if we know that ahead of time, that if we're feeling something strongly, there's a really strong likelihood that we're overreacting. And... um so, yeah, I think in community it's really easy to take something personal that wasn't meant for you at all. And I think one of the things that um, one of the things that's unusual about our community is that so far anyway i I'm not aware that that we have had those kinds of of things with each other. It's been relatively smooth and i and I'm just as puzzled about that as I. <laughs> anything and and so I think along the lines of your question um what we have done that's different, I think is we have processed those things we have sat down every day with each other and said, either what are my blind spots or where where do you see me being triggered, or can you give me feedback about how I function today in this group and and we talk about that every day and sometimes more than once a day. And I think that is unusual, but we're able to talk things through on a regular and consistent and persistent basis. So far we've done more talking than we have working, and I think that that has contributed to our success so far. So, it, you know, as far as things in the world triggering us, we're kind of right now, we're, we're in an insulated little bubble right now. and And, of course... We're on our honeymoon. We're honeymooning. So so things we're on our best behavior. I'll, I'll grant you that. <laughs> and who knows how things are going to roll out in a month. We may be at each other. I don't know. But I think the way we're functioning right now, because we're so aware of possible triggers and so aware of our own emotions, and we're aware of our – we have insight into our challenges um, – so I think that, that the conflicts are mitigated. Another thing about us that I've noticed is that each one of us are open to and able to accept negative feedback. Most friendships or people in in life who get really, really close develop the kind of trust where they can say pretty much anything to each other. And we decided we were going to act close from the beginning. You know, we were just going to trust each other on that level. And Wes and Jenny allowed us to move in to, you know, uh, the home that they offered. They just trusted us that we weren't going to tear it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and we trusted them that that they really were offering what they said they were offering. And we've trusted each other um, with our with our issues and said, here's an area where I'm weak, so please call me on this if you see something. You know, So I think that that uh, has contributed to our success so far. What do you guys think? I think I wish I could talk like you. <laughs> <laughs> no fear. No, no fear, no fear. Well, you know, not the good thing is nothing has been really pre-planned or destined or anything. It's just all in flowment. There's that. There's that word in flowment. It's just falling into place as it needs to on a day-to-day basis. We just get up and and we smile at each other when we get up and. Like, okay, what's on tap for today? And we just sit down and we talk and we figure it out and then we go and do. And 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 everything is, is working out so far very well. You know, we just plan things on a day-to-day basis and we just move forward a day at the time. And, and that's really how it's going, just a day at the time or an hour at the time. Just, you know, what, what needs to happen when it happens and and there's no... There's no issue so far that I've seen 
you know, we just work work it out a step at a time, and everybody talks through what their their feelings and thoughts are, and and then we just move forward on a consensus. Really, we're working off of a consensus. You know, I have a little bit of a Quaker background, and that's kind of how they work, is on a consensus. <laughs> and it works. We have, uh, we still have that caller who was on, and we have uh, an extra one. I'm going to try the first one, see if they're there. 919. I'm going to click your button. Are you there? 919. Okay, you're still gone. I'll mute you and 303. Hello? Oh, is that me? That is you. Oh, hi. Um, I just connected. I really don't have a question or anything. What are we talking about tonight, by the way? <laughs> You're tuning into the Remembering Show, and the topic is living in community. Okay. Well, last night I called in about people meditating to try to prevent this war on Syria, and I think that's about community. And I hope everybody's going to continue to do that tonight because David Icke says, don't demonstrate, um, meditate, and we can stop anything. And we don't want another shock and awe in Syria. Absolutely not. That's tremendously horrible damage and terribly expensive and a big drain on on us spiritually as well as physically. So maybe everybody could think about meditating tonight and trying to prevent that horrible disaster from happening. And I'll be done. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. So there's an example of someone reaching out. There seems to be a need in the community, and that is one one thing that I've had to learn how to do since I was mostly individual doing it myself. Um, I actually had to reach out and ask for some support in my own goals. I'm glad this... I didn't even get her name, but I'm glad she reached out with one of her own goals. Mm-hmm. Yep. And <clears throat> kind of got distracted by the soup. <laughs> Lost my train of thought. <laughs> Matthew is the the co-host of this show. He's he's gone this week. Um so yeah, one of one of the things I've had to learn is to to ask for ask for help. Even if it's not something like I need help tying my shoes or it, something like that. I just need to ask for um I guess energetic support. And to me that just means people know what my goals are and they're they're happy to uh, they're happy to help in any way, and having that sort of open, authentic uh, friendship is that's something I'd never had before. And being able to recognize each other's value and helping each one of us to see the value in ourselves. Not everybody actually realizes they have value. You know, they see it in other people, but not necessarily in themselves. And and having someone else help you to realize that helps to bring out magic, I think. You know, it, it really is. When you can when you can help someone understand the value that they bring to the community or for themselves, I think it just kind of lights their fire. You know, they just light up and things happen and magic can can be created from that. You know, we just all help one another with <clears throat> bringing out whatever our gifts are. You share your values, yeah. I think. Yeah, you share your values. And I wanted to comment on the word community. Uh, it comes from 
from the base word commune, which means conversation, is having a talk with someone besides yourself. In other words, you talk it out. You don't go, you know, and hide and, and seethe and, and become angry or something like that. You talk to the person. You commune, and therefore you're in community, and uh, that way you get to understand the other person, and the other person gets to understand you, and it clears so, so much, pro so many problems that could arise, and uh, that's what we're all about. Um, Jenny, what were you helping us this morning, seeing our own value? Well, what was that conversation? Well, I'm strongly into marketing, marketing of, of many things, but, you know, Chase has done some fabulous work with creating his own music, writing it and, and producing it and, you know, getting it published and printed and all those things. I don't know anything about doing it with music, but it's fabulous. And he now... I see he now needs to get it out there to everybody to be able to enjoy it. Absolutely. And the same thing with Cindy. She's written this awesome book and had created this fabulous following of people and then then just decided, mm, yeah. maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and so I, I think everybody would benefit from reading the book and from listening to the music. And and so, you know, what I like to do is, is help people get their thing out there. And so I'm going to help them Yay. to get it off the table and out to the masses, you know, because it's valuable. Everything that they've done is valuable. And there's no reason to just keep it to themselves. We all can benefit from it. And so, you know, I didn't write a book yet and I didn't produce music yet, but I can certainly help them get theirs out. You know, Thank so you. it's Thank all about you my heart because that's what I wanted to help them do. Yeah, <clears throat> I don't have her abilities to market, but I, I wanted to, I wanted to just get his music out there like now, and Cindy's book I haven't read yet, but I will, and I'm sure it's of value, real value too, knowing her. So everybody just uh, pitch in and help us do that. Help Jenny do it, whatever way you can. Are you calling us hoarders okay. that we're not sharing our value? Yes, yes. <laughs> yes you're value hoarders, yes. You're hiding, you're hiding your light under the bushel. <laughs> and it's time to take all of our light out of the bushel right. mm. and start shining. Yes. Mm. Yeah, it's time to shine all of our light. Not mm -hmm. just yours, not just yours, but everybody to shine mm -hmm. their light this yeah. time. Everybody has a value to share. We're the ones we've been waiting for. Yeah. And don't we love it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, past yeah. time. Yeah. It's totally past time. Past time. Yeah. Did we have another caller? No, that's my phone calling to make sure oh, that the show oh. is working. <laughs> <laughs> I was scrambling the hour before oh. the show because I was given uh, the responsibility to host the show, but I not the password. Oh. I didn't know how to log in, oh. and so I scrambled and got it. This conversation that we're just sharing right now brings us to another really good topic, and that is the Ubuntu philosophy. Um, every single person on the planet possesses abilities or talents or gifts to make the world a better place, without exception. And we've come to a place in our world and, and come to a place in history, I think, where more than ever there are people wandering around feeling like they don't have anything to offer, not sure what their gift is, and not sure who they are actually, because they're not doing the things that reflect their own personality or their own character. Instead, they're getting up at a certain time every morning and going to a slave job and collecting a paycheck and coming home and going to bed and, and doing the same thing day after day after day. In the Ubuntu, which I'm using a word that <clears throat> comes from, um, it's a tribal word, 
African tribal and Native American tribal word that means without me, without you there is no me, and together we are strong. And the connotation of having an Ubuntu community is that we are all valuable, and so no one is given a job to do. Would you like to comment? <laughs> I thought there might be some really good comments you made from. We've been we've talked on several radio shows, and Sherlyn has not spoken yet. And so I saw her talking over there in the corner, and what is it? <laughs> so Sherlyn is one of our uh, tremendously valuable um, family members, community members. She has so much to offer. She's an example of one who just would sit back in the background and not be heard and not be recognized for all that she brings. But in Ubuntu, everybody's recognized because nobody has the assignment of going to work and bringing home a paycheck. It's expected that everybody uh, will function in a way that reflects them. And when they do that, when everyone in a community is allowed to do that, the community thrives. And all through history that's been the case until money was introduced, which was a long time ago, um, some cultures adopted money and some didn't. And the cultures that didn't adopt money um, did well, you know, did well also. So um, anytime there's a discussion about talents or abilities, I want to talk about you know, developing uh, a skill or labor-backed or talent-based uh, economic system. Michael Tellinger has adopted the Ubuntu philosophy for Southern Africa and has <clears throat> coined a phrase, coined a word, contributionism. And that's how he describes communities working together and expressing their own character and personality and in doing so create a thriving uh, society. And so here, we're hoping here at, at Lake Norman to replicate what Michael Tellinger has done in South Africa and produce a thriving community that doesn't require money, but just requires each person to be allowed to express their unique gift and ability. And that's what I have to say about that. We have... A caller, while well, we have a human being who's calling in, <laughs> and I'm sure they have value to bring. So I'm gonna unmute you, Stefan. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Hi. Welcome Hi, to the show. Thank you for having me. How are you doing? I'm doing really well. Uh, I actually didn't have my hand up. Uh, this uh, <clears throat> and I just tapped in. I've just um, managed to dial in to the show today, so I'm really not um, up on where you guys are. But um, hey, let's go. <laughs> so the topic tonight is living in community. Okay. Yeah. Um, well. Um, uh, I've um, recently, uh, um, I guess relatively recently, made a change uh, in uh, my life while I was uh, a member of um, a, a, fam a little mini community, that being a three-person family, and uh, I guess five days a week uh, traveling to a little bit of a larger uh, mini community, which was uh, my workplace. Uh, I've um kept uh in my little family community i've left the the, the larger work community and i'm um, expanding into other communities that are um uh i guess more in line with uh how i want to be and and where i want to put my energy and uh um i've been touching base with some one people's uh groups here uh locally and uh and getting involved in uh the uh the my son's school helping out at school and it has been incredible incredible uh working uh with uh kids 
is um, is where it's at. And uh, I know that these communities uh, have been interested in the Sudval or Sudbury Valley models as they've been um, brought to the attention of um, of uh, those who are regular listeners listeners to the Five D shows. And uh, one of the tenets where of are you the located? Sudval, I'm located in um, uh, Melbourne, Australia, so near the South Pole. Um, and um, yeah, basically the Sudval model is giving uh, 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 kids or children or young adults uh, a voice in uh, the community, in their community. So everybody actually has a say. So it's, uh, it sounds revolutionary because, hey, we're going to let the young guys have, um, have a vote as well. But um, that's what a community really is, right? That's, um, the, the, it's not a group of people making choices for um, uh, the greater. It's uh, everybody having a say. And um, there's no, no surprise that... Um, that we're um, asking these questions, given that uh, the current paradigm that we reside in is um, labelled as democracy, when the actual uh, construct itself feels like it's something else, whatever you'd <laughs> want to call it. Um, interestingly enough, it's um, there's an election um, here um, today. Um, this is it in Australia. The people. Uh, um, being told that today is the day that they um, uh, must cast their compulsory vote to choose um, um, who's going to lead. Breaking up a little bit. You're saying they must cast their compulsory vote for the Prime Minister of the country. Are you there, Stefan? I'm here. Uh, So you were breaking up? Am I back? Yep, you're back. You were saying today's the day they must cast a compulsory vote. Their vote. Yeah, mm, yeah it's the um, election that are for the government uh, in Australia today. Mm-hmm. So how do, how does how does that how does that sound to you? I, I mean, a compulsory vote. Yeah, everybody in Australia over um, 18 years of age are told that they must, uh, um, you know, register to vote. It's compulsory. And if you don't, it's a um, an offence, right? Um, that's basically what the government says, unlike some countries where you um, choose whether you want to vote or not. So, um, yeah, today is the federal election. Um, and um, yeah, it's where the uh, community decides either in this democracy. So it's interesting that now we're talking community today because it's a federal election here. Hey, very hard to understand. Very hard to understand your um, your phone. I think it's it was cutting out for a moment, but quite the interesting tidbit as we're talking about a new way of forming community that nothing is compulsory but it's all driven on your true self and your truest passions and how everyone has everyone has value and if they really live in their most authentic self then that's when the most the most harmony and the most guess the most fun life becomes indeed Stefan is there that... go on yeah that that's definitely where it's at uh personally um for me uh i guess um given that it's an election there's a part of me that um, wants to spit out, um, go down to you know um, where the ballots are being taken, you know where all the, where they where they're doing it, and and say a few things. But again, it's that part of me that is informing me that 
that there isn't any requirement for me to do that and that and that is that is what feels good is just being and and my harmony is right here with me right now always and um and it's an awesome thing and um yeah definitely keep that keep that there and um have it radiate outwards and um and yeah peace world peace um uh, that's that's where it's at what i'm driving at and um much love to you all uh, i know yeah, we're all we're all in in that together and um i hope you all have an awesome night and thanks for getting me on thank you stefan much love We have another caller in the queue, and her name is Jolly Jerry. That's your username, Jerry? <laughs> that would be me. <laughs> Hi, Hi there. I uh, actually just uh, came back in. I was outside, and I just tuned in for your last little bit, and I heard you say you were talking about community. And a little while ago, I wrote a poem about community, so I thought maybe I'd share it with you. Oh, do share. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's entitled Community, and it says, We the people, we are one. We live in harmony under the sun. We broke the chains and now are free to cooperate and live in community. We love to live in cooperation. We join together for daily creation. Each day we enjoy all that we do. All the days are fun and new. Humans love to socialize, this we truly recognize. We get together, we dance and sing, we laugh and play, it's always spring. We know how to care for our dear mother, we love her just as we love one another. We nurture and care for this dear land, humans and nature work hand in hand. Life on earth is now such pleasure, it's a time that we all treasure. Community and friends is what's it about our lives are fun, there is no doubt. There you are. <laughs> oh, how beautiful. Wow. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Jerry. Am I talking on the right side of the phone? Are you talking on the right side? No. Thank you, Jerry. That was beautiful. Do you have any more? Um, I've always got more. <laughs> have you time for more? Let's see what yeah. else is. There's one. What did I say? I saw one. Another one. Excitement. Oh. Yeah, this one's fun. I feel excitement. I feel excitement in the air. People are joyous everywhere. What's occurred? What's going on? People are bursting into song. Love abounds. Vibration is high. It feels like we could touch the sky. Emotions are positive. We start to dance. We move in harmony and balance. The day is here. Humanity is free. Peace broke out. And all that we, the people, work for with such intent has come to us. It is heaven sent. We have free will choice and the right to live in harmony and balance so that we can give and receive in cooperation with all on earth, living our lives in joy and mirth. And so it is. It is done. We, the people, we are one. We live together in harmony to do and be. Yes, we are free. That was in anticipation for this freedom that's coming. It's here. Oh. Just done. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Jerry. Thank you so much. How are you doing after the big weekend? Oh, great, thank you. The energy was rocking, so yeah, I was blessed to be able to go. Yeah, it was wonderful. I really enjoyed everybody's company and uh had well, a good time. Paying, yeah, it's I think all of us still haven't come down yet. So you're in good company. I think we have one minute left. So I'm going to give this to Chase. Yep. I don't know how to close it off. <laughs> I, I think it's a continuing conversation. I, I don't think we have to close it off. Yeah. Yeah. It's, Jerry, are you still there, Jerry? I, I think I am. I'm here. It's so neat that you called in at the very last because we feel that we feel you here. You gave us each one of your book of poems, and we have a piece uh, of you. Feel that you're part of our community, so thank you for calling in. Yeah, oh, you're here with us for sure. Cheerio, Jerry. Cheerio, <laughs> Cheerio everybody. Cheerio. 
<laughs> and Linda and Lynn are here with them for the night. Hi, Gary. This is Lynn. Linda's here. Oh, wow, everybody's here. Gosh, you lot. Wow. How wonderful. That's all, Glad folks. Get called... around. <laughs> lovely, lovely to hear you. Lovely to hear you, all of you. You too. We love you, Jerry. I love you guys too, all of you. Um, thank you to everyone who listened tonight. Your value is truly appreciated. Mm-hmm. And we're about to close the show right about now. Mm-hmm.